Hey guys, Jetstream Coasters here with a No Limits 2 tutorial on how to make accurate BM loop connectors. Um, as you can see, they look pretty good here. Uh, unfortunately, they don't come default in No Limits 2. Um, I wish they did, but this method is pretty quick, only takes a few minutes. Um, and if I don't explain something very well or go too fast, please comment below um, and I'll do my best to answer you. Uh, I do think this should be something that more people know how to do in No Limits 2, so make it a video. Um, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so what we do, make sh what we want to make sure first of all, right off the bat, before we even start pl placing support, is that our spine type is correct. So we actually want it to be a medium box spine type. Um, if it is a standard box, I'll show you really quick what that looks like. Um, it's way too skinny. Um, not nearly what it looks like in real life here. Um, this is in comparison to Medusa at Discovery Kingdom. Um, so you can see that it does need to be a medium box type. Um, to look better and it makes your life easier when you're trying to make the supports anyways. So once that's set, um, set to medium, we gonna, we're going to add two rail connectors. Uh, one right about there and one right about there. And they can just be approximates. Um, we want to make sure that that top one is set to simple. Uh, so we want to make sure there's nothing connected, just, just a simple rail connector. And that bottom one we want to make sure it's a twisted straight down. So let's go ahead and set that there. And we want to make sure that this twisted straight down rail connector is in the right spot. In order to do that, um, it's going to be right where it hits vertical, actually just below where it hits vertical. So it'll be right about right about there. So you can see it switches to that straight down mode um, versus straight up. So we want it to be right below, right about there. Uh, and then we're going to move this guy down just a little bit. And then we add a support. So our support is going to be a custom box beam. It's going to be 1.6 feet, 1.6 by 1.6 in size. Um, and then in order to match the track color, we're going to change that to spine color right there. So it's that nice green of Medusa. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and add the beam. So just a very simple box beam. Now because it is square, we want to make sure that it is rotated appropriately. Um, to the coaster. Now I intentionally made my loop here at an angle so that way it wouldn't be too easy because if it was perfectly aligned to the grid um, this would this step wouldn't exist but I know that that's not how it works sometimes with our coasters so made it a little bit easier for you. Um, so in order to check the rotation there's no way to check the rotation without freezing it but actually if you um, change the relative x value to six feet you can see how it sticks out. Um, and so we're just going to have that be temporary so we can see, you know, which direction it's rotating. Um, oh, we want to make sure it's also at a vertical beam setting. So not horizontal beam, but we want it to be vertical, which will align it there to the grid so it's nice and uh, horizontal. But what we want is we want this line or these lines here to be perpendicular with our rail connector lines. So we want it to be right about, right about there. Let's go ahead and start adding values. 20, nope, that's not enough. 30, okay, it's getting there. 40, okay, 40 is a little too far. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try 35. Oh, actually, that looks pretty good right about there, almost, if not exactly 90 degrees. Um, this is just a guesstimate. We'll just leave it there um, just for now. And then we'll go ahead and change the relative x value back to 0. Um, so then what we do to tuck, because as of right now, this beam is sticking through the spine, and we don't want that. So in order to tuck this beam down into the spine, we've got to change the absolute negative y value at start. Um, and that will bring, and this depends on which direction you drag your beam, but for me, this would be at the start value. If it's not, try the at end value. Um, so I usually start with about negative three feet, and you can see how that just pulls it down nice and close to the spine. Um, and at this point, I just kind of pull it down there. I've had a little bit of trial and error with this, so yeah, that looks, a, that looks about good right there. And at this point, we just freeze it, see what it looks like. Um, so you can see we're already, hey, that's actually pretty good straight off the bat. Um, it does kind of bend in a little bit. I'm a little bit, uh, I like my details, so this isn't quite there for me. Um, so we're going to pull this down a little bit closer um, to see what that looks like. Um, if it's sticking out too much, like so, you actually have to pull it up. That, that feels a little counterintuitive, um, but that is, that is what you do. So you got to just pull it up like that. Um, let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks just about perfect. Um, so you can see we're already making some progress here. Um, so the next thing we do is we add 
uh, just a little bit of an extension to it because when we add our circular pipe down here, we want to make that box beam look like it's sticking into it, um, like it's welded together like it is in real life. So in order to do that, we just quickly add um, extra lengths here. The at, end, the at end length, we're going to change that to one feet. Uh, just one foot extra, um, just to add a little bit of a connection there. Um, so then what we do is we're going to add the circular uh, pipe portion of the connection which will be right about here. So in order to get the right height for my free nodes, because normally they just kind of randomly place wherever they want, um, I just go ahead and click and move around that, that rail connector there uh, just a little bit and then press undo so it stays at the right height. But then my free nodes, they're locked at that height where that rail connector was. So it makes things a little easier. Now place the free nodes here and here. Uh, we're going to want them right about there. And this beam, uh, most people uh, would think they're smaller or larger. They're actually 30 inches, 30 inch pipe. So we're going to go ahead and enter our support panel here. And we're going to change that to support color, obviously, and then change to 30 inch pipe. Um, we don't want any absolute Y value at the start. And we don't want any extra length. So we're going to change all of those. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and quickly add the beam. Yeah, add the beam right there, just like that, and take a look how that looks in perspective. Yeah, so it's a little bit higher, but that's okay. And we'll just move it down really quick. Um, and if we look at the left, we want it to be about a foot and a half uh, below our rail connector. So right about there. Let's take a look. Yep, and that looks mostly, actually that's not centered at all. Um, let me mess with that a little bit here. We all also want to make sure that this is perpendicular to this, obviously, because that's how it is in real life. So we're going to go ahead and okay, that looks good. We're going to go ahead and freeze it, see what it looks like. Unfortunately, any way you do this, this is going to be a little bit of trial and error. Um, so it's almost there. We just got to move it a little bit over and just a tad bit up, maybe just like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Just needs to be moved a little bit up, a little bit higher vertically. And there we go. And you can see how that beam coming through looks really nice um, in connection. Now, it is way too wide. We don't need it nearly that wide. Um, in real life, it's only just slightly wider than the box of the spine itself. So we're going to just tuck those in really quick. Just like so. Maybe about to right about there. Let's see how this looks. And again, this I wish it was defaulted in the limits too, but... It isn't, and this still looks pretty good anyways. Actually, it's a little too skinny. So we're going to pull that out just a little bit wider. Okay, um, assuming that's going to be correct, we're going to add a support connector there uh, right in the middle of that beam. Sorry, in the middle of that tube support. Um, so we're going to add that there. And then we're going to add a couple of footers, just approximately right there and there. And then the beam... Uh, unlike the circular pipe underneath the box, it's not going to be 30 inch. These supports, the, the actual lateral supports of the loop are going to be 24. So we want those to be 24 inches. As you can see in the reference picture, this is clearly larger than the width of the supports themselves. So um, 24 inches I found looks the best. We're going to go ahead and add that right there to the middle. Connect. Perfect. Okay. Um, so we're going to want to make sure those footers are in the right place. Um, I think they're a little bit too spread out. Pull those in a little bit tighter maybe. We want to make sure our clearance is still good down below. But the most important thing is that our lateral supports make a straight line uh, with our box that we've already supported, with a box we've already placed. So we want this to be right about a straight line. That actually looks pretty good right about the Actually, no, we're going to move it in just a little bit. Yeah, like that. How about that? Okay. So we're going to freeze it and take a look. Hey, it's coming along. Um, so a couple more details. You can see that our box is sticking through the track. You can see the square outline of it. We don't want that. Um, and so this is, oh, and then it leaves a ridge on the other side too. So we don't want that either. We're, we're detail-oriented people, right? This is no limits too. Um, so what we do is, first of all, we have to mess with the rotation value. It looks a little bit more. Do you see where the... The, the box beam intersects with the track, it creates an angle. And we don't want that angle. We want it to be straight across. 
one. So let's just try. It doesn't look like much. Maybe just 36 degrees uh, instead of 35. Oh, yep. So that angle, that line right there is straight across. We want that. That's good. Um, and then what we do is we actually do mess with the, app, the relative x value that we were messing with before, but not nearly as extreme, not 6 feet. I'm just going to do negative 0.1, a tenth of a foot. And we're just going to move that over a little bit, a little bit more away from us, away from the camera. And that looks pretty much perfect. Um, it does, if you get up close, it does leave that little triangle shape thing there. I don't mind that much. It's exactly the same color, and you can't tell from any distance away um, other than right up next to it, which I don't know why you're that close to a support connector anyways. But um, I haven't really found a way to get rid of it, so I just kind of live with it. Um, this looks really good. Uh, I think we're just about done here. We just add a couple of flanges uh, for that extra level of accuracy. Um, you obviously can do this. Everybody knows how to add flanges. Um, and then we'll add a couple of prefabs to kind of wrap this up. And maybe one right there. Okay, and then we're going to atomize that and pull that away that closer to the other loop support. So I want that to be about symmetrical. Make sure there's no clearance issues here. Nope, okay. And then we're going to go ahead and freeze it. Take a look. Okay, so uh, that is just about it. That uh, wraps up the tutorial here. Um, it's pretty straightforward, like I said. Uh, gives some nice looks, makes your coaster just that much more detailed. Um, and if we compare it here with the, the reference image that I pulled up, it is pretty much there. Unfortunately, it doesn't, because of the vertical track connectors, uh, it doesn't let us go as high as BNM actually places them. You can see they place them a little higher up on their loop. Um, but this is, this is as high as they can go. Um, so we'll just have to live with that until the guys decide to implement BNM loop connectors. If that'll ever happen, who knows? Uh, but for now, this will work. I um, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, comment below. Be sure to subscribe as well. I'm going to be releasing my Nighthawk Roundup 150 project here pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Signing off.